Um, trying to put this together quickly this morning, <laughs> as you might have guessed, uh, after <laughs> instant in a pub last night. Um, I'm going to talk more about one specific kind of theoretical approach and how that might be used to kind of engage with digital techniques and how the digital techniques can kind of complement that theoretical kind of basis. Um, as I said, I've just finished my PhD. I say just. I finished my PhD about a year ago at Southampton. Um, and I came at it from a background uh, in archaeological computing, um, but I was supervised by Matthew Johnson. And so I, obviously my thesis ended up taking a little bit of a theoretical turn in trying to combine kind of two sort of different approaches to uh, the medieval past. Okay. So um, what is lived experience? Lived experience has kind of come out of the world of phenomenology or the, the phenomenological kind of theoretical thinking. Um, for the last 20 years or so, phenomenology has been an intensely discussed subject in prehistoric archaeology. The uh, phenomenological way of thinking um, has taken steps to embrace an understanding of the past that's based on bodily experience in the world. Um, it's in initiated a number of discussions concerning how we can think about human experience in the past or the lived experience of the past. And I think we tend to call it lived experience now rather than phenomenology, because I think there's so much kind of, uh, I don't know how to put it, bad stuff associated. Your baggage is exactly the word I'm looking for, thank you. Associated with phenomenology. Um, the major critique of phenomenology has um, really been discussed as its lack of methodological robustness um, and for con considering it being overly subjective. Uh, I'm going to briefly say that the subjective things, and I've always considered it quite an interesting critique, mainly because I feel like a lot of phenomenological papers, or at least particularly interesting ones, tend to look at engaging with sort of subjective opinions or our own interpretations of the space as a way of kind of acknowledging our own baggage that we're bringing to the archaeological, like the material culture table. Kind of, so we're bringing our understanding of our lives and kind of admitting that when we're considering a phenomenological approach. Um, but what is lived experience, I suppose, is the second question is, I think lived experience is where we think about the past that really considers how people lived in the past, how people worked in the past, um, and how we can approach that in a whole range of different ways. Um, digital approaches. Um, I was kind of brought in with, from a background in spatial technologies, but um, I actually ended up switching to more of a virtual past kind of approach here, um, mainly because I think that was kind of the project had been set up for me to do for my thesis. And I think, because I, I was partnered with the National Trust throughout my, throughout, the, throughout my thesis, and they definitely had a very specific idea of the outputs they wanted from my thesis, which was a whole range of very beautiful images that they could use in their guidebooks that kind of reconstructed the past. Yes, I know there's a lot of baggage with that word as well. Um, but that's what they wanted. Um, and it was whether that was necessarily possible. Um, this might not sound like it flows perfectly together, but I guess one of the things that I kind of realised while I was working you know, on the digital techniques is that while phenomenology was kind of discussing subjectivity and those kind of frameworks, uh, com archaeological computing was discussing alternative frameworks for sensory interaction with the material evidence of the past um, and with its varied interpretations. So it was kind of looking at different ways of approaching material culture, whether that be visualising them or engaging different like haptic methods. Um, its underlying methodologies have been similarly critiqued um, and interconnected with the same kind of issues associated with phenomenology. Um, basically, both of them have been asking very, very similar questions, namely how do we deal with uncertainty and subjectivity in the archaeological record, which is probably the underlying point a lot of us make. Um, and I think it's something that comes out in a whole range of different com computational approaches. I think yesterday in the Grand Challenges session, it came out when we were discussing complexity and data quite heavily. It's how we deal with what's kind of sad data. It's not complete data. Okay. So this is a fairly standard kind of visualization of the past, or well, this is how I've approached it anyway. And visualization is great for kind of thinking about 
lived experience because you can bring a whole range of different data sets together into one place. Uh, for example, this visualization at the center of this image brings together um, standing building recording alongside manuscript evidence, it, alongside artifacts with um, reproductions and other people's research, basically. So in one place, I'm bringing all these elements together. But at the same time, this, this sort of image of the past I'm presenting to you is, well, it's my own interpretation of that information, which is an underlying problem with that. But also, it's not really experience, is it? It's, it's silent. There's no, experience is something that goes beyond just what we can see. It's multi-sensory. Um, so kind of with that in mind, uh, oh, I did put a slide asking if that was experience, well done. Um, I kind of tried to look at different approaches to this, uh, different techniques. So if you came to our minor Stewie session yesterday, which you might have done, you would have heard me talk a lot about acoustics. Um, and how we can model the acoustical properties of space to try and get an understanding of the experience of sound within that space. Um, the first method for looking at acoustics is um, you can look at it like this. You can look at numerical values that we can get out of a space. Um, in the same way as we can do just um, in visualization, we can do uh, lighting analysis to discuss how much light is visible. In an acoustics, we can do the same. However, we're looking at this here and we're still trying to understand what people could hear or what the sound would be like in a very ocular centric manner. We're basing it on what we're seeing and not what we are hearing. At the same time, I think work. this is the Great Wall of Ice Mountain in Dunedin, Kent. It's one of the oldest areas in the building, dating from the early 14th century. I'm sorry, a lot of you have probably heard me say that a lot of times. <laughs> um, at the same time, uh, so this is an oralization, so we can model a space in the same way as we would visually, and um, we can then insert anechoic sounds to make it sound like you were in that room. But at the same time, are we then, is that creating us an oral-centric approach? Are we now thinking about only what we can hear in a space rather than the entire experience of a space? Is that really, again, is that really a lived experience? Um, this is apparently the next way forward. And I have to kind of champion this as I'm about to start a project at York, uh, creating the acoustical properties of a space to go along with some visualizations. Um, and the Oculus Rift is very interesting and it is one approach that we can begin to kind of engage with more of a multi-sensory experience of a space. But it's still not completely multi-sensory, is it? It's still not, in, it's still not bringing in to get in other senses of the world. It's not bringing in smell, which I know Stu Eve has approached using the dead man's nose. Um, and I guess my question is, does it necessarily matter? I'm not sure. I think whatever happens, these approaches are a good way of starting to question what lived experience is or how people experience maybe in the present and how that can affect the past. And obviously we have to acknowledge all of our baggage, but then I don't know. <laughs> if we're ever going to get any closer, if all of these methodologies are going to have similar drawbacks or similar problems associated with them. Anyway, that was my 10 minutes, I think. I'm sorry it was so short. I hope it was okay. Thank you.